Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves at the Hunk, which is a planetoid at the center of an asteroid cluster. Now it's filled with untold wealth, and you'll be trying to get the most by mining, building, climbing, pushing your way to the top, and extracting to make the most money on commissions. Strange Orbit Undermined is an action strategy game of wealth, demolition, and deception. It's for two to six players. It takes 30 to 60 minutes to play. It's for ages 14 and up and published by Kinsoul Studio. Now, it's on Kickstarter right now, so I'll show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are not final, they're prototypes. To see the most up-to-date art and components, check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get to be a character. Now, they'll select the character, which is associated with a specific color of their starting tile. It's also going to have an ability, and those will have different difficulties from like one to maybe three, where these ones are easier to understand. These ones are maybe for more experienced players, so you can you know balance things out that way. It's also going to double as a player aid, but there's some other ones like these three. Now, again, you'll see also what the characters look like, and everybody will also get the corresponding character figure, and you'll be using this to move around the board. Now here's the board set up for four players. You can use already pre-set up cards to follow to set things up, or you can set things up randomly like I've done here, and you're gonna be stacking stones, drawing them from a bag and placing them, and you'll have anywhere from level one all the way up to level sixes of stones. Anywhere that you don't see any stones is lava. Now, by the end of the game, you're trying to have the most money, and you're going to be doing that by collecting these different aspects that are out on the board. For example, you might be gathering copper, or you might be gathering different types of gems, like emeralds, or maybe uh, rubies, or maybe sapphires up here, like that. But you also might be getting gold. Now, these are going to be worth a different amount, and you're going to be gathering these. And they're going to be going into your bag, which you're able to hold up to five in each of these spots like this. And anytime you add one here, you can rearrange these any way you want. That's going to be important because people might be able to steal things that are on top. Now, also what you're going to be trying to do is extract these and get them from your bag into your extraction site. Uh, because that's going to be, you know, keeping them safe from other players. Now, at the end of the game, you're going to be getting a certain amount of money depending on what you have. For example, coppers are worth a dollar. But once you've got four of them, everyone after that is worth four dollars. Gold's worth two. Diamonds are worth six. The gems, which are the sapphires, rubies, and diamonds. Now, these ones are a little bit uh, tricky uh, because, uh, and the emeralds as well, of course, is because at the end of the game, everyone's going to count how many they have gotten of each of the gems. And if one of them is more than the other between all players, then those are all only worth one each instead of the normal three. The other main way to get money in the game are by contracts, and there's all sorts of different ones, like mine four rocks in one turn. And by the way, rocks are the ones that don't really have anything on them. And if you do it a second time, uh, you get an additional dollar, so you get seven total if you do that twice. Or maybe you want to end your turn adjacent to lava, which is the orange part of that board there. Four dollars, two for you know repeat work, six dollars total if you get that. So that's another way to be making money. Now, typically there are five contracts available face up, and on your turn you can complete at most one one of these and at the end of your turn you refill it back to five for all the other players. And there's even some of them that say prepaid on them. This means you can take them without doing anything special and you put it in front of you and again you could make six dollars at the end of the game but if you don't do that it's minus six dollars. Now players will go in clockwise order and you'll get ten action points to spend and you'll use this little board in the middle to help track that. And players have a, an action summary on their player aid that tells you the different things you can do, as well as how many action points they cost. So you'll spend all your up to 10 action points, and then it'll be the next player's turn, and so on and so forth. Now you're going to be moving around the board. So some of the things you can do are move. For one action point, you can move to an adjacent spot that's on the same level, height-wise, or one level down. You can't go more than one level down, and you can't go up, because if I wanted to go up from here to here, I actually have to climb, and that's two action points. To get up there, you can go up only up to one level higher, for example. And again, maybe you're using an action to move for another action point, and maybe you want to mine. You can mine anything that's adjacent to you at the same height or one height higher. So let's say I want to mine this rock right here. I'd take this and add it to my bag, Again, your bag has two columns, and they can hold five each, and anytime you add one, you can rearrange them. 
The one on the top is going to be important because other players can steal those. Now, why might you want to do that? Because, hey, the rocks aren't worth anything, right? Well, you can get contracts for some of them, but you might want to build here so that you can go up one level. And now you're only one level up from this diamond, which will allow you to you know, like get that. Now, if you're adjacent to or standing on your starting tile, you can deposit. And this allows you to remove one tile from your bag and place it here. Now, again, why would you do that? Well, this is what's going to make you money in the end, and you are limited to how many you can have in each of these bags. Now, you can take an action to steal from an adjacent player. You would take the top uh, item from one of their bags and place it in your bag. Remember, you can rearrange your bag anytime you add to it. You can also antagonize or push knock somebody off and that <laughs> pushes them one space to an adjacent spot at the same level. And then, hey, it's made some room for me to go in there and get that, that diamond there. Uh, you can also uh, lay their figure down on their side. And one of the actions you can do is basically on your turn, you can spend action points to stand up. So on their turn, they could have done that. Now, another part of the strategy are these bomb rocks. Now, these bomb rocks are dangerous because let's say this is me and I'm going to mine this. Now, this bomb rock, if it has two or more sides at the end of the player's turn that made this unstable, uh, has two sides or more that are unstable, meaning there, were, there was a tile here level to it and now it's not. So it does not have a tile level here, it does not have a tile level here, it does here and at least in all these, but there's two. If it's two or more, it's unstable. At the end of this player's turn, this is going to explode. Not only does it come off, but also any of the other ones that are at the same height of that will also explode, meaning you might end up exploding someone that's already there. They would go uh, down, they have to get themselves up spending actions, and they lose all of, the, all, uh, all of the things they've collected in one of their bag columns. Then you place it on the board here. Now, once this gets to three, you'll see this is a special marker there. Now, in the final product, these will fit on there uh, much nicer. But once you're here, at the beginning of a player's turn, they will remove however many is the furthest one. So this one is three. They'll remove two, three tiles from the outside of the board. But there's certain rules like you can't remove, you know, other bomb rocks. You can't remove player starting uh, tiles and things like that. But as these things explode, the game sort of gets faster towards the end because you're going to be removing more and more tiles. And that is one of the end triggers in, at the end of the game is being, you know, having no more tiles. Now the other way for it to end is if everyone has extracted. To extract, you go onto your starting tile and you spend six action points and you'll take all the tiles from your bag and move them to here. Now you'll usually already have tiles here, but I wanted to leave this empty to show you that if you do not extract, you'll actually get a $10 deduction at the end of the game. But again, this is how you, you're gonna extracting all those, those things. And again, you're gonna be having stuff from there before and you're going to at the end have all these to make some money as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Now the money you make from these are gonna be here, $1 for each copper like this, except your fifth and above of, of your copper will be $4 each, $2 for gold, $6 for diamonds, and your gems, which are the, the emeralds, uh, sapphires, and rubies, you add all those up of each type from all players and whichever one is the most goes down to one because it was the one that most people collected. And don't forget, you're going to be looking at your contracts as well. And don't forget, you'll be getting money from some of the contracts you fulfilled. Remember, if you got a prepaid one, you didn't fulfill it, you get minus those dollars and whoever has the most at the end wins. And now that you know how the game's played, these contracts will make more sense to you. So have two of each of the gem types or have a full bag with only valuables, meaning no rocks. Uh, mine a diamond, deposit a value of eight in, in, in one turn. Uh, so things like that. Now let's look at some of the abilities. Here's some of the easy ones. Rudy may use one action point to climb to any adjacent space regardless of height because he has this cool little grapple hook. Rudy may use two action points to jump across one tile gaps. Let's look at another easy one. At the beginning of her turn, Yara may transfer one tile from her bag to the deposit without being adjacent to her deposit tile. That's really cool. Each turn you can perform one free mine action on a valuable or two free mine actions on rocks. Cool. Otto's cool. He's got one of the advanced abilities. He can continue to mine. So when you mine with him, you can freely continue mining to subsequent tiles so that those tiles are in a straight line and they must still pay the action costs for movement when mining this way. So he gets a boom, this, he uses this cool thing here. And when his bag's full, auto cannot be knocked down by other players. That's kind of cool too. And in a nutshell, those are the main concepts of Strange Orbit Undermine. Well, there you have Strange Orbit Undermine. And as I showed in the overview, it's a tactical game where you'll be leveraging your special abilities, choosing which actions to use while you move around the three dimensional board 
gathering valuables to make the most money. Now, if you'd like to see the most up-to-date art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me right in the description of this video. Now, that's going to take you directly to the Kickstarter project page, and I'm sure that Kinsoul Studio would love your support.